on to good evening video number five cue the music wings let's do wings when you build this kit one of the most frustrating things about it is the pylon system okay in that there's a couple of little parts that you put inside a couple of little holes and you fiddle about with it you're fanny about with it and at the end of the day, you toss it in the bin and you think, chuff it, I'm not going to do it. It works, you know, if you do it properly. And this particular video is going to tell you how to do it properly. Okay. So, <clears throat> wings, right. Number one, let's do GCU. Remember, GCU is for general cleanup. Now, edges... Uh, there's ejector pin marks on inside. Please check the upper inside wing and the lower inside wing because the ejector pin marks are in exactly the same place and they come with a little shroud of plastic. Uh, if you don't cut them off, your wing won't marry together. It won't mate correctly, okay? And you'll come to clamp your wing top and bottom halves together and there'll be a gap at front. And you'll think, what on earth? And then when you open it up and you look inside and you'll see all them ejector pin marks. So clean them up now. All right. As far as wings are concerned, just be careful where you're cutting because there's screws and stems. All right. And you don't need to cut, cut them off. All right. When you're cleaning wings up, especially on the back end, clean up with a sanding stick and not a blade because a blade will cut chunks out and you don't want that okay so gently does it all right it's not a race so a sanding stick for that you can go start with a medium you don't need to do course start with a medium sanding stick and then go on to a finishing stick all right uh where your screws are you can just leave them a little longer leave them longer now where where you look at the part and you think oh well that's where the part ends and the gate starts don't cut it there cut it a little bit further back so that the actual spring mechanism is a little bit longer okay you only need to leave them springs on if you're going flaps down by the way okay <sighs> Your pylon inserts, then, you can't glue them in because they are part of the mechanism that moves. And on this particular bird, I have done it so that when the wings sweep, the pylons move. It's first time that I've done it. And the reason being is because of the other tornado kits that I've built, I've always come up to that wall and even though sometimes I've got a ladder propped up against that wall and climbed over it, up it, I've looked over the other side and thought, sod that and climb back down. Whereas on this one I haven't, I've scaled the wall and I've done it correctly. So pop your pylon inserts in, just be careful, they are definitely carpet monster fodder. Don't lose them because look at the picture, exactly what I say there. Those little inserts are like your five-year-old child in the supermarket. You turn round, turn back, and even though you've cut them off and put them on your bench somewhere, they've disappeared, okay? They just go. So be careful. Pop your inserts in, and then you've got a, a bar that should have three holes in it, two that's close together and one that's further apart. And the one that's the furthest way apart is uh, goes towards the wing tip. So uh, put your put your rail on. Put, drop them little pieces in and clip that rail on to the wing tip part, the middle pylon. Call it the middle, the inner pylon. And then you you need to. There's a little bit of flash on lugs. You need to trim that, okay? Then dry fit your wings and check the edges for fit and make sure that you have got all those ejector pin marks off. You have to check it, check it, check it. 
And then what you can do is on stage 15 in the book, if you are following book, it would tell you to get part B40 and B39 and glue them onto the actual fuselage. Don't. All right. What you need to do is marry that to the bottom of the under wing. Don't glue it onto the main body like it says. Put them under the lower half of the wing. Look at the photo and then clip that third hole onto that corresponding part. And if you dry fit that, if you look at the photo, you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, you can hold those little parts underneath the wing there with just a little bit of masking tape, uh, just to make sure that it doesn't sort of slip about one thing or another. Uh, once you've done that, it, listen, if you get one of them pins that pops off, and, and you determine that you want to make this pylon system work, don't do what I did of at last five builds and, and, you know, walk away from it. Stop, have a breather, and do it again, and try again, and try again, because it does work. Trust me, it really, really does work. Okay. And then this next picture shows the two wing halves together. And again, because I've already done my prep work and I've done GCU, there's no uh, ejector pin marks on the inside. So the two wing surfaces do marry very, very well. Okay. Uh, what, watch the lug on the pin. This is this next one's from a different angle. All right. And, and you can see, I've just turned that upside down, okay? Then, once you're happy with that, so you've got your bar across your three pins, a little bit of masking tape to hold that on, pop your top of your wing half on, and remember what I said when we were talking about gluing the tail together. You don't have to glue that wing all in one go. You can clamp it, and with the Tamiya Extra Thin, you can just put one tiny little touch a glue on that wing surface, squeeze it together, thumb and finger, 10, 15 seconds, it'll bond. And then work your way around the wing. Okay? So you, you can glue it inch by inch, literally inch by inch. All right? Just keep an eye on that part that you've put underneath. Make sure that that's still there. Plenty of patience is needed for this. You know, a bit of masking tape to hold it in place. Okay. Once you've done all that, you've got your two wing halves together. It's all glued. The, the edges, just give them a gentle sand with a medium and then a fine sanding stick. Uh, you don't want to seam. All right. And if you do it nice and gentle, uh, you, you will prevail. You will You will get that right. All right. You can uh, pop your wing glove on uh, to the side of the fuselage, but I think I cover that in main body. Once your wings are on, add your T-bar, all right, uh, on, onto the main build, uh, and then you, you're good to go. That particular part is all finished. All right. Follow the video, follow the pictures, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Wings, uh, it looks difficult with that pylon system. It can prove tricky. But if you just take your time, see it through, you'll be absolutely okay. Moving on, let's talk about the cannon. Okay, the cannon. Why am I talking about the cannon? Well, number one, when you come to cut... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm stumbling. When you come to cut the cannon off, if you just put a little bit of masking tape underneath it and then press the cannon onto the masking tape with your finger, when you come to cut it off with a blade, the, the part will stick to the tape. Just look at that photo there, okay? It's the tiniest little part. It's carpet monster fodder for definite. As far as putting the cannon shroud in, 
when you come to dry fit that first into the nose fuselage side you might notice that there's a bit of a ridge and you can see that next picture i've got my blade in and i've had to literally chop and chop and chop and chop some plastic out of the side until i was happy that that cannon housing fit in nice and tight and lovely i think it took a tiny little bead of filler as well okay make sure that that's right this is one of those places that is significantly visible on this build and if you settle for a substandard job it'll look awful if you've got a little bit of patience a sharp blade a little bit of sanding stick you can get into that hole and make it right and then just when you think that job's done you've got another one to do on the other side depending on whether you're going to go gr1 or gr4 version uh one of them has a blanking plate and one of them has two cannons okay next because we've done wings uh and we've done fuselage we're gonna go tub in all right so tub in so you've built your office and you've got your cannon sorted onto your fuselage side and you've put your two sides of your office uh, front end around your office and made it as one. That's ready to go in. It's ready to slide onto the body. So uh, just look at that picture. If you turn your bird upside down, you can line up your office uh, with the bird and there's a lip around the frame look basically what you need to do is slide it on and if you've already done good prep work good general cleanup it should pay off here uh, if you've not bothered then you're going to struggle with bits of burrs and stuff so it should slide on and keep going until it literally clicks into place when it clicks into place tam your extra thin glue it in okay uh, this is how it looks from top all right uh obviously you've seen how it looks from bottom uh once you've done that and you've got your wings onto the main frame you're ready to add the top plate of the fuselage uh, again tammy an extra thin a, a clamp or two bit of glue 10 15 seconds you will get that fit absolutely spot on all right once you've got it all clamped up you can li leave it to dry have a little gentle sand and it should look absolutely perfect your intakes should look superb you've already done the work on your wings you've done the work on all your main body and now your office is in and it should all just glue clamp and sand lush okay no problems with that as far as the main body is concerned because i do 99 percent of my sub assemblies and i put them in a bits tub uh my control surfaces including main body so my, my rear wings there look uh again glue them inch by inch uh you can marry them up no problem your two main body parts uh single and twin aerial spoke about them earlier uh i had to choose l56 not p249 because it will bent out of shape uh when you do attach that on don't glue that little lug because it needs to be a little bit springy it needs to be able to move uh, then you've got uh, your, your little inlet uh, doors you can glue them on now while that is still on the sprue uh, and just stabbing that once you've cut it off the sprue if you just gently stab it uh, with with point of your knife uh, you can help to locate that uh, and again, glue that while it's on spro. Glue them in. It's not. It's no problem. Uh, don't forget to drill the holes for your rails. 
uh, because if you're going rails on this bird, they need locating holes. Uh, and I added a little bit of photo X tubing uh, into the uh, body uh, and some little photo etch bar uh, onto the rails to make sure that I got a good marry uh, and that actually worked a treat. Make sure that on all this part you've got really good general clean up. Okay. So you can uh, paint them white uh, inside your intakes and the fans. If you just look a bit further back into the picture, you'll see the fans. Paint them steel. All right. Dry fit everything. Uh, this is from a different angle. Uh, paint inside. Don't forget to paint inside there in in, in the white. Uh, don't forget that. Okay. And then all my sub assemblies were built. Uh, I got my sides on. Uh, attach them. If you attach the sides, if you sort that front bit out, get that bit sorted. Concentrate on that. The back side. Uh, you can see to that next all right it's not you don't need to rush it okay if you've done good prep work there is no hassle here at all especially down side it's all down to your preparation everything okay uh t bar next you can see ejector pin marks underneath there they've got to come off uh stick your wing gloves on and then you built then ready to put your wings on and put top of your half of your fuse large on uh, and your office. So no problems with that. That gets a tick. That were all quite easy, that one. Uh, once you've built it then, we're on to attachments. So your tail, pop your tail on and see this little bit here. Look, it always needs a little bit of filler because it's about a millimetre too short. Uh, I've got my pods on at the front end and I've got my wing skirts on. Uh, I've put the back end on. Don't forget those uh, little pins. Uh, step 28 in your book. Uh, and, and you can fill there where required. Uh, and then pop the canopy on on a dry fit. And then come to put the nose on. Do not put the pitted tube on yet. That is the very, very last job that you need to do on this particular build. Uh, you don't need it on. Don't don't put it on. It, it's guaranteed to snap off. Okay. That should be, I think we're just about built there. Just going to check through my notes. I've had to write notes out because it's been that long. Done those. Um, done those. Done those. Done those and done those now according to my book this is end of stage uh, video number five should be built you should have everything built not necessarily in the order that you're going to watch these videos in uh, but you'll take from them what you will uh, you don't have to follow it obviously step by step some parts you'll think you know i can do that what's he talking about uh, and i get that all right, but hopefully you have picked some little bits out up to press that will help help assist building this Revel 1 in 48 Tornado. Video 6, I'm going to talk about priming, painting, decals, pinning and oil wash. Uh, so uh, hopefully I'll see you for those uh, to show you what I did for this particular Desert Storm bird. Uh, and if not, I hope that you've enjoyed these little videos and I hope that you've uh, picked a few bits up from them and that they've helped you along your way. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. See you next time.